If you work in data, you have two choices. You can see AI as your competitor, operate from a place of fear and slowly become obsolete. Or you can see AI as your co-pilot. After coaching hundreds of data analysts, I think I have a pretty good sense of who AI will replace first. And I'll be honest, my aim right now is to take you from a place of fear and uncertainty to a level of how data veterans actually think of AI. But first, we need to talk about the thing that's keeping 99% of data professionals stuck. Here's what the scarcity mindset sounds like. AI is going to take my job. If I don't learn everything right now, I'll be left behind. There's not enough opportunity to go around. I need to protect what little that I have. And when you operate from that place of fear, you make terrible decisions. You hoard information, you resist learning new tools because they feel threatening, and you spend months perfecting skills that AI is already automating. You play defense instead of offense. But here's the uncomfortable truth. If you see AI as your competitor, you should be terrified because AI can analyze massive data sets in seconds, it can write code, it can build models, and if your entire value proposition is, I can do all these tasks, then yes, you are in trouble. That's the scarcity mindset. It is the belief that the pie of success is fixed, that if AI wins, you lose, that there's only so much opportunity to go around, that AI is taking your slice. And I get it, I really do. When I was delivering pizzas for eight bucks an hour, trying to break into data, I felt the same way. I'd see people from computer science degrees and think, how am I supposed to compete with that? I'd watch experienced analysts and think, I'll never be that good. But here's what changed everything for me. I realized I wasn't competing with those people. I was competing with yesterday's version of myself. And the moment I shifted from how do I protect what I have to how do I use every tool available to become better, that's when everything changed. Because here's what the scarcity mindset misses. AI isn't replacing analysts, it's replacing tasks. And that's a massive difference. Think about it. Excel didn't replace financial analysts. It just made them more efficient. Calculators didn't replace accountants. They freed them up to do higher level work. AI is doing the same thing right now. It's automating the grunt work, the repetitive queries, the manual data cleaning. And honestly, that's a good thing because that stuff was never the real valuable part of your job anyways. The valuable part, the part that gets you promoted, that earns you six figures and more, that makes you irreplaceable is your ability to think, to ask the right questions, to understand the business context, and to catch when AI hallucinates, and to translate data into decisions that actually move the needle. AI can't do any of that, at least not yet, and probably not for a very long time. So if you're stuck in that scarcity mindset, you'll never see the opportunity. You'll be too busy protecting what you have to realize that AI is actually handing you the keys to level up. But what if we flip the script? The abundance mindset is the belief that AI isn't your competitor, it is your co pilot. That instead of AI versus you, it's AI plus you. And that combination, that is where the real magic happens in today's job economy. And here's what that looks like in practice. Let's say you're a data analyst. Before AI, building one predictive model might take you a week. You'd spend hours cleaning data, writing code, debugging errors, and testing different approaches. Now with AI at your disposal, you can build multiple models in a day. You're not just a builder anymore. You are the architect. You are designing systems, you are testing strategies, and you are making high level decisions that actually matter. You're not doing less work per se, but you're doing more higher value work. That's the shift. The analysts who embrace AI aren't getting replaced, they're getting promoted. They're moving from tactical execution to strategic thinking, from individual contributor to team leader, from 60K roles to 150K roles. I'll tell you about my very first data analyst project on my first job. I was tasked with creating an HR dashboard. The data was a mess. Excel sheets scattered across folders, pulled from a legacy system. I manually had to clean everything, union the file in Tableau and built what I thought was a pretty solid dashboard. The manager loved it, but then he asked a question that changed everything. How do we automate this every month? I froze. I had no idea how to do that and I didn't know Python yet. But instead of saying, I don't know how to do that out loud, I said, give me 45 days. So I learned Python. And within three months, I had built an automated data pipeline that cleaned the data, removed entries that shouldn't have been there and automatically updated the Tableau dashboard on the server. That project taught me something critical. The job isn't about analyzing data, it is about building systems at scale. It's about automation. It's about using every tool at your disposal to deliver more value. And that's the abundance mindset in action. It's not about protecting what you know. It's about constantly asking what tool can help me solve this problem better and faster. That mindset and that willingness to learn whatever I needed to deliver value, that is what took me from making $15 an hour to over six figures in just a couple years. And it's going to separate you from everyone else too scared to adapt. I'm a little bit more worried about the labor impact simply because it's happening so fast that yes, people will adapt, but they may not adapt fast enough. You're going to lose 
your jobs not to a robot. You're going to lose your jobs to somebody who uses AI. All right, so now that we've talked about the mindset, let's get tactical. Let's talk about what the sexiest jobs actually look like in the AI era. Because here's the thing, the job titles haven't changed. Data analyst, data scientist, analytics engineer, those roles still exist. But what the roles actually do, that's evolved. And the people who understand this evolution are the ones that's gonna get paid. Robert Greene said it best in one of my favorite books, Mastery. The future belongs to those who learn more skills and combine them in creative ways. And that's exactly what's happening right now. The analysts making six figures aren't the ones who just know SQL or just know Python. They are the ones who are combining technical skills with business acumen, AI fluency, and strategic thinking in ways that make them irreplaceable. I'm gonna break down the three evolved roles that are dominating the market right now. And I'm gonna be very specific about how these roles actually look like day to day, what skills are required, and why companies are willing to pay top dollar for them. All right, the first role, the strategic data analyst. This isn't your old school data analyst who just builds dashboards and sends reports. This is the analyst who uses AI to get answers faster so they can spend their time asking better questions. Before, a data analyst might spend 80% of their time pulling data and then analyzing it. Now with AI, that flips. They can spend 20 percent of their time using AI to pull data and then 80 percent of their time on strategic thinking. But let me get more specific on what that could look like. They're not just running queries. You can use GPT or Claude to help generate SQL code, then validating and refining it. They're using AI to automate their weekly report so they can focus on anomalies, the things that didn't make sense, the patterns that need more investigation. They're asking questions like, why did our customer churn rate spike in Q3? What's the ROI of our new marketing campaign? And which product features are driving the most engagement. What's causing the drop-off rates in the Northeast region? And here's the key. They're not just answering those questions with a chart. They're building narratives. They're creating consulting style presentations using the pyramid principle. And they lead with the answer, supported with key insights, and structure everything to drive decisions. This is where the skill combination comes in. They're not just technical. They're combining multiple skills in more creative ways. First, they're masters in data storytelling. They know how to take a messy data set and turn it into a clear, compelling story that any CEO can understand in under 10 seconds. Secondly, they understand business context. They know the difference between a metric that matters and a vanity metric. They can connect data insights to revenue, to customer satisfaction, or to operational efficiency. And third, they know how to use AI without becoming dependent on it. They can prompt engineer effectively. They know when to trust AI outputs and when to validate them. And they catch hallucinations before they become problems. Fourth, they're excellent communicators. They present to executives, collaborate with engineers, and translate between technical and non-technical teams. That's four different skill sets. Technical analysis, business strategy, AI fluency, and communication all combine in one person, and that is what makes them valuable. Because they're not just reporting what happened, they're influencing what happens next. They're walking into boardrooms and saying, based on my analysis, we should shift our marketing budget from Facebook to LinkedIn because our B2B conversions are 3x higher there. And here's a 90-day plan to make that transition. That's not a data analyst, that is a strategist, and strategists get paid like strategists. All right, now let's talk about the evolved data scientist. This is the role that everyone thinks is dying because of AI, but it's not. It's actually transforming. The old data scientist may spend weeks building one model from scratch. The new data scientist uses AI to build multiple models in a day and then spends their time on work that actually matters, choosing the right approach, validating results, and integrating solutions into business processes. And again, this is about combining skills in creative ways. They're not just coding everything from scratch anymore. They're using AI to generate baseline models, then refining them, and using tools like GitHub Copilot to write code faster. They're leveraging pre-trained models and APIs instead of reinventing the wheel every time. But here's what they're actually spending their time on, the strategic work that AI can't do. They're deciding which problem to solve. Should we build a churn prediction model or a customer lifetime value model? Which one will have more business impact? They're thinking about model deployment. How do we integrate this in our existing systems? How do we make sure it updates automatically? And how do we monitor for drift? They're communicating with stakeholders. How do we explain this model to non-technical executives? And how do we build trust in the predictions? And how do we set realistic expectations? Now let's talk about the skills that set them apart. And again, it's a combination that matters. First, they have a full stack mindset. They're not just model builders. They understand the entire 
entire data pipeline. They know how to get data from the source systems, clean it, model it, and deploy it, and then monitor it. That's combining real data engineering skills with actual data science skills. Second, they're excellent communicators. They can take a complex machine learning model and explain it in terms a business leader can understand, and they can translate technical accuracy into business value. That's combining technical depth with business communication. Third, they understand the limitations of AI. They know when a model is overdrifting. They know when AI is hallucinating, and they know how to validate outputs and catch errors before they impact the business. That's combining AI fluency with critical thinking. And fourth, they're problem solvers first, coders second. They focus on business outcomes, not just technical elegance. Now, because they're not just building models, they're building systems that generate value. They're the ones saying, here's how we can use AI to reduce customer churn by 15%, which translates to $2 million in retained revenue annually. They're the architects, they're the innovators. They're always solving problems that directly impact the bottom line. Okay, now let's talk about the next evolved role, the analytics engineer. This is a role that barely existed several years ago, and now it's one of the hottest, if not most in demand positions in data. Analytics engineers sit at the intersections of data engineering and data analysts. They are the ones building the infrastructure that makes everyone else's job possible. And this role is a perfect example of combining skills in creative ways. They're taking data engineering principles and analytics best practices and software engineering methodologies and blending them into something entirely new. They're building data pipelines using tools like DBT, Airflow, and modern data stacks. They're transforming raw data into clean, reliable data sets that analysts can actually use. And they're creating data models that make sense for the business. They're documenting everything so that when someone asks, where does this number come from? There's a clear answer. They're automating quality checks. They're building tests that catch data issues before they become a problem. And they're setting up alerts that notify the team when something breaks. And with AI, they're taking this to a whole new level. They're building intelligent pipelines that can self-correct, that can flag anomalies automatically, that can adapt to changing data sources without manual intervention. Now, for the skills that set them apart, first, they're proficient in SQL, not just basic queries, but advanced transformations, window functions, CTEs, and optimization. That's the analytics side. Second, they understand data modeling. They know how to structure data for performance and usability. They understand star schemas, slowly changing dimensions, and the data warehouse best practices. That's the engineering side. Third, they're comfortable with version control and software engineering best practices. They treat data transformation like code with testing, documentation, and peer review. That's the software engineering side. Fourth, they know how to use AI to accelerate their work. They're using ChatGPT to help generate their code, and they're using AI to write documentation. They're using automation to handle the repetitive parts of their job, and that's the AI fluency side. That's four different disciplines, analytics, engineering, software development, and AI, all combined into one role. Analytics engineers are the ones that make sure the data is trustworthy. And in a world where companies are making million dollar decisions based on data, trust is worth paying for. Now here's what all three of these evolved roles have in common. They're living proof of Robert Greene's principles. They're not just specialists in one area, they're combining multiple skills in creative ways to make them irreplaceable. They're not competing with AI, they're partnering with it. They're using AI to handle the grunt work so they can focus on the strategic work that actually moves the needle. They're not just technical, they're business savvy and they understand the goal isn't to just write the perfect code, it's to deliver business value. Okay, so you have the strategic data analyst, the AI-powered data scientist, and the analytics engineer. These are the roles that thrive in the age of AI. They operate from an abundance mindset and they use AI as their co-pilot. Now, knowing what these roles are is just one thing, but actually becoming them is the hardest part. It requires a fundamental shift not just in your skills, but in your mindset, from a task executor to a strategic partner. And this is the exact transformation that I guide my students through in my program. And if you're serious about taking this leap and you want my personal roadmap to move from scarcity to abundance career, I opened up a few spots for a free clarity call. Click the link in the description to learn more about it. Now, for the rest of the video, I wanna give you the first step you need to take right now to start building this strategic muscle. Okay, so let's bring this all together because I want you to understand what's really happening here. The skill that's gonna determine whether you make $50,000 or over $100,000 isn't coding. It's not Python. It's not machine learning. It is your ability to evolve and adapt. The shift from task execution to strategic thinking. Stop seeing AI as a threat and start seeing it as the most powerful tool you have ever been given. And to understand that your value isn't in what you can do manually, it is what you can orchestrate. AI is going to keep getting better. It's going to keep automating more tasks. And if you're stuck doing the same low level work you were doing five years ago, you will be left behind. But if you embrace AI, 
If you learn how to guide it, validate it, and use it to amplify your impact, you're not just going to survive, you will thrive. You're going to be the analyst that gets promoted while everyone else is panicking. You're going to be the one that lands six-figure offers while everyone else is stuck at entry-level roles. And you're going to be the one that companies fight to hire because you bring something that AI can't replicate. Strategic thinking, business acumen, and the ability to turn data into real decisions. You've said... AI could wipe out half of all entry-level white-collar jobs and spike unemployment to 10 to 20 percent in the next one to five years. A lot of what they do, AI models are already quite good at. It's hard to imagine that there won't be some significant job impact there. And my worry is that it'll be broad and it'll be faster than what we've seen with previous technology. So the question isn't, will AI take my job? The question is, am I going to evolve or am I going to get left behind? And I already know your answer because you've made it this far in the video. You're not the type of person who plays small. You're the type of person who sees an opportunity and goes after it. So here's what I want you to do. Stop waiting for the perfect moment. Stop waiting for someone to hand you a roadmap. Start building, start learning, and start positioning yourself as the analyst who doesn't just use tools, but masters them. Because the future belongs to those who evolve and that future is already here.